What's up everybody? Welcome back to Raining Grace Homestead. I am Della and today we are going to do a video series on tomatoes. This is going to be a very um, infor informal video so sit down with your cup of coffee or your tea or whatever you want and get a notebook and a pen so you can write some stuff down because there's going to be a lot of information thrown your way. So today we are going to talk about the different types, different varieties, um, how to know what you need for your particular scenario, and um, just a few fun facts about tomatoes. So let's get started. So a little bit of fun facts. Um, the tomato they believe uh, originated about 10,000 years ago in, about, in South America, most likely in Peru. And the um, new evidence shows that there was a tomato that was domesticated about 7,000 years ago um, in Ecuador. Ecuador, yes. Um, and then they were also known as the golden apple in Europe because the tomatoes were actually yellow whenever they came over on the ships. It is actually considered a fruit, not a vegetable. So if you think that you're eating your veggies, I am sorry to tell you, but you are not. It is actually a fruit. There are more than 10,000 varieties of tomatoes. Um, so that is great because you can try different varieties and types and flavors and um, skin thicknesses, anything that you want, you can do. Um, with that and they aren't always red they can be yellow purple black pink red orange um, green let's see I'm trying to think of any other colors I haven't thought of but that's they come in all different shapes sizes varieties colors and that is why I love tomatoes because there are literally so many different kinds and so many different ones work better in certain environments. So now we're going to go into the different types. So you have your microdwarfs, you have your dwarfs, you have your determinate, semi-determinate, and indeterminate. And I'm going to go a little bit over each and every one of these for you. Sally with the microdwarfs, this is um, one of the newest things with tomatoes. It's a it's a few years old but it's the newest ones for tomatoes and there are very limited varieties for the tomatoes <clears throat> um, they usually will um, they only produce little cherry tomatoes they don't have any like of your slicers or your beef steaks um, or anything like that but you can grow them in a one gallon container or I've even done less um, but they recommend a gallon um, container for growing a um, micro dwarf tomato. They only get about three to four inches tall and you can grow many in one little space. So then we're gonna go to your dwarf tomatoes. And your dwarf tomatoes can be grown in a three gallon container. Um, once again, I like to push the limit and so I can do different things. So really experiment, but they suggest a three gallon container and they get about three to four feet tall. So there is some staking required on certain ones, uh, certain varieties, and there are multiple varieties that you can choose from. And also the amazing thing about your dwarf tomatoes is some are a beef steak and some are your little cherry tomatoes. Um, but since they would be determinate, you would still only get a certain set of amount of um, fruit and height. We're going to move on to your determinate tomatoes, most likely a bush type of a tomato. It'll grow in a bush. Sometimes they get a little taller and they need staking. Um, but when you see them on the label, it'll read D-E-T, all capitals, D-E-T. Um, they usually are five foot tall or a little bit under and they're best grown for like patios and containers and small gardens. They are great for preserving. And the reason why they're so great for preserving is because it is a, de a determinate uh, plant. So 
what that means is it'll have a set amount of fruit and a set amount of height and it's all your produce will be at once so you can pick all of your paste tomatoes if it is determinate and that is when you will be very very um it'll be a very good thing to make if you're making like sauces if you're canning and preserving that way you can all do it at once and you don't have to like throw them in the freezer and then get them out and then it's all there at once so you're gonna have semi-determinant and the semi-determinant is a lot like the determinant but it also has indeterminate qualities as well so you're going to need staking and these will do um produce all year long um they are let's see how do i want to work more compact than your indeterminate but they still require some staking so then we have your indeterminate tomatoes or your vining tomatoes and they will be labeled ind or indet these are all capital letters and the reason um why they are called vining tomatoes is because they can grow 10 feet tall or more if you have something that they can trellis they're going to go up it even if it's more than 10 feet tall um you can use anything to stake them um, but they will produce fruit all year long um, unlike a determinate tomato which is all at once you're indeterminate you get your harvest all throughout the season these are going to be more of like your slicer and your beef steak tomatoes and the other thing that I have for you about indeterminate tomatoes are most of them are heirlooms. We are going to go on to our varieties of tomatoes and this could seem like a really, really big list, but the only reason why I am doing this is because when I first started, I didn't realize, I only thought that there were beef steak tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. I didn't know that there was anything in between and then I would get these tomatoes and I'm like, they say cherry, but they're bigger than a cherry. And so I hope this helps you a little bit more. Um, this is what I would have liked in the beginning of my gardening season. Your first one is a beefsteak tomato. These are your classic um, flavors. They are the big ones that come on the vine, so they're gonna take the longest. Um, they also have a juicy, meatier texture and flavors. And, um, they're really good for like salads and sandwiches um, or what I like to do also is if I have a whole bunch throughout the year I'll just slice them and I put different colors in and then I um, get some butter and I heat that up until it uh, turns like a brownish color and then I pour it over it's very very tasty so next you'll have your Capri tomatoes these will have like low acidity but sweet sweet flavor um, and they are like golf sized snacking salads roasting salsas these are going to be really good for your capri tomatoes next is going to be your pear tomato so your pear tomato is going to be a pear shaped tomato they're gonna have a juicy texture they're gonna have a um, sweet kind of mildish flavor and they're good for like snacking and salads and preserving um, because they are, sorry, I had another fly on my back. Um, but they're very heavy producers for the entire season. So you're gonna get quite a bit on a pear tomato um, plant. Next you have your plum tomatoes. So your plum tomato will have like an oval shape of a tomato. It is like aroma and it's going to have a mild flavor and a low water content and it's a firm tomato. These are really good for like sauces, pastes, roasting, um, dehydrating, preserving, canning. Your salad tomatoes are like two to three inches in diameter and they are really good for like being chopped on salads or on sandwiches they are like a tart juicy flavor for your tomatoes and it is like a good balance of 
sweetness and acidic -y. Great tomato, it is similar to a plum tomato, it's just a little bit smaller. And these are oval shaped, but they grow in um, clusters, kind of like a cherry. And um, like the cherry types. And they have a milder flavor than the cherry and they're good for like snacking and putting in salads and kebabs and roasting. Um, it's just an all around good tomato. And then last but not least, um, you have your cherry tomatoes. These are your bite-sized round fruits. They just, they're probably not gonna make it to the kitchen. Um, because they are very good for snacking. They are sweet to the taste, which is why they won't make it to your kitchen. Grow in clusters, um, just like your grape tomato will. It's a, let's see, and they're good for like salads, kebabs, snacking, um, roasting, quick sauces. It's a very, you can do, like if a recipe says to use a paste tomato, there have been times that I've used a beefsteak tomato. There have been times that I use a, um, a salad tomato. Really use what you have. Um, it's kind of like a potato. There are certain potatoes that taste better for certain ways, but you're not going to turn down a potato in your roast, whether it's a red potato or a white potato. It doesn't matter. It's kind of the same thing for me with tomatoes. It's just certain things go certain better ways. You're also going to need to know what varieties you need based on the growing season, how long it takes for them to grow. You have your early season, mid season, and late season. Early season is 65 days or before. These are really good for your cooler climates because it takes less for them to produce. Because then you have your mid season, which takes about 70 to 80 days for that fruit to ripen to its full maturity. And that um, will produce in mid summer. Then you're going to have your late season, um, season, uh, which is 80 to 100 days. And these are going to mainly be your bigger tomatoes because it takes longer for them to go. When choosing the variety that you need, look at the number of days between your first frost and your last frost. Obviously, these are averages. So how do you choose a tomato plant, right? So you're going to need to know where you're gonna plant them. Are you gonna plant them in raised beds? Are you gonna plant them in containers? Are you going to be putting them in the ground? What are you doing with your tomatoes? So that will also depend on what you are going to grow. Your pots and your raised beds, you're gonna go more towards independent or you're gonna do indeterminate varieties. Containers are gonna have determinate to little bit to no support. So these will be more like your bush varieties for the, your containers. And the third one is hanging baskets or the upside down method. Um, you're going to want determinate varieties for that. And um, I mean, you could do indeterminate for all these or dwarfs or micro dwarfs. It's just which one truly fits better in that scenario. The good thing about a tomato plant is you only need one. It is a self-pollinating plant. Um, if you have a small area, a tomato plant is a great way to start gardening for the first time. Going to go over the basics of a tomato just so you know. Here is your basic flower. We're going to start with the flower. So let's see, you have your ovary right in here. Then you have your ov ovules. I wish I had a pen to make this easier for you guys. And then you're going to come down here and you have your style. And then right here is your stigma, your stamen, your petals. And then you have your uh, sepal and your pedicel. Right, so when a pollinator comes or you hand pollinate, which is just a vibration, that's all it needs to be onto the flower itself. The stamen will have the, the pollen and it will fall onto the stigma right here. And it goes down the style 
and into where the tomato is produced. And you can come over here and you can see that it's all part of the tomato fruit as well. Um, so you have your stigma, your style, which is here, stigma and style. You have your seeds, you have your sepal or sepal and your pedicel. A little bit deeper into the tomato plant if you wanted to get to know your fruit a little bit better you have your pedicel your sepal you have your seeds your placenta your locular uh, cavity vascular cavity which is in the uh, mesocarp inner skin and then you have your outer skin your exocarp it is very simple. I am not going into depth. I just want you to be able to see what your tomato plant is doing and how it is being produced. Here is your tomato plant. We've already done all that. So we're just gonna focus on here. So you're gonna have your stem and you're gonna have your primary root. And then you have your lateral roots, which are the ones that shoot out your extra ones, your, your secondary roots. Your primary root is here, which or a tap root. Then you have your stem. Let me get a little closer here, because here is your sucker. So a sucker, you can actually take this off of the plant and create a whole new plant in and of itself. Um, when a sucker is formed, you want to prune that. Um, not everyone prunes them, but it's a good thing to do um, when they're small if it's really really big don't do that don't don't prune it because it could actually um, make your plant more susceptible to diseases pests and we don't want that but this sucker actually takes energy away from your plant from producing fruit so if you take this sucker away it's going to put more energy into the fruit producing process and a bonus you can get extra waves of plants so like if you're having a second round of crops and you don't want to start seedlings again that's a great idea you can wait until the plant has produced some suckers you can put them in water or soil and it will produce more roots and then you have another plant without having to do the whole seedling process um, starting off as seeds and your sucker is um, formed in the inner nodes which is right in here because then you have your node just right here and then your inner nodes boom right on the very center you're gonna go up you have your fruit that comes from your flowers and flower clusters and then as the plant goes up the shoot tip is just gonna continue to grow if it's a determinate, it will stop, but if it is an indeterminate, it will just keep on going. And it will produce more compound leaves. That is the basics of your tomato plant. Now we're gonna get a little bit into the basic um, chemistry of your tomato. So once the seedling is ready to go into the ground, it'll take two to three weeks for it to actually produce a blossom or a flower. And then after that, it'll take 20 to 30 days for it to reach the mature size. Um, the fruit itself and then it'll take another 20 to 30 days for that variety uh, of fruit to start ripening and changing colors because of the ethylene gas that it produces once the ethylene gases start producing that's when the tomato starts to soften and that's when it starts to be ready it's firm but soft um, it's a very hard thing to describe unless which is really good if you have a person who knows tomatoes they can bring in a tomato or you can come over to their garden and you can feel the texture of how a tomato is supposed to be ripened carotene and um, lycopene is going to be produced and that is what's going to create the color you know just the different colors that you have if you have a darker tomato you get anthocyanins um, anthocyanins anthocyanins uh, <laughs> but once you get that it will make a darker tomato once that chemical is released it is sometimes difficult to determine if 
your plant that has the anthocyanins in it, the extras anthocyanins, to see if it has a disease or a nutrient deficiency because um, as it's growing, the leaves will be more purple, it'll be darker, your stems will be more purple and more darker. And sometimes that can be hard if you need, if your tomato is struggling and you don't know where it is or all of a sudden you look and you see that it's changing color, you automatically think something's going on check to see what variety it is if it has a darker skin of a fruit then more than likely your tomato plant is going to have a more darker um, appearance so that does not necessarily mean that there is something wrong so just beware of that little thing um, because once again not all tomatoes come red anyways um, I hope this is informational for you guys. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments below. And remember, this is a journey that is brand new to most people. And it is okay if you don't get all of this knowledge down. Um, it's a learning process. It's experimenting. It's having fun. Remember, grow in the root of grace.